We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. Are young Americans losing faith in the political system of the United States? That's a question that needs an answer, and there happens to be one. We're very fortunate to have with us Liberty Nation News' political columnist, Mr. Joe Schaefer, who has the answers for us. How are you, Joe? Uh, great, Mark. Uh, good to be here. Really, really interesting topic. Um, can't look, I can't wait to talk about it. So this is great. You wrote a fantastic article on the page of LibertyNation.com called Young Americans Having No Faith in the Political System. Can you give us a, a brief rundown of the, the latest data on this? Well, it was a Democrat polling firm called uh, Blue, Blueprint. You actually may have to look at my notes. Blueprint, May 29th, released a poll um, of young Americans between the ages of 18 and 30, and they were shocked by their own words at what they found, which is widespread distrust of American politics in particular, and and the notion that America is ever going to get better. They see the numbers were 65% of those polled said that all politicians are corrupt, all politicians. 64% said that America is in decline and they don't expect it to get uh, better in their, during their lifetimes. And one of the quotes by the Democrat who ran the poll, what he said was, these people, these young voters see um, their country being led by deeply corrupt people. Um, you know, they have no, it's a total disconnect between young Americans and the establishment in Washington, D.C. I, I think, I can't remember who said it, but uh, it might have been Mark Twain. It's the, uh, the corrupt politicians in Washington, D.C. make the other 10% look bad, mm -hmm. which uh, kind of plays into what the young voting demographic is thinking now uh now they've got this uh, apparently according to the polling that they've got this very poor view of what uh modern politicians are and, and there's two points i'd like to to really dive into that and the, the first one is that th there's almost this idea of uh it's i think it's called golden age thinking where we we perceive that the past was better than the present and that the people were perhaps a little more moral than they are in the present as well. Uh, but I don't think that's quite right, is it? I think that there's been, if we look back through history, especially places like Chicago and New York, uh, we've seen uh, political corruption as, as almost it's uh, endemic to the system, isn't it? I don't. I really don't think that's what's going on here. It's not about looking back at the past and thinking things are wonderful. It's really people living in a system where outcomes are not working out for them. And the question is, and you know, this goes back to so much about what um, we've written about in Liberty Nation, what I've written about. Uh, I wrote an article last year that I was very uh, particularly proud of. I just thought it was an interesting concept about unpopular leaders being mm -hmm. in the highest elective office in all the nation, all the leading nations of the West, Justin Trudeau in Canada, Macron in France, Sunak in England, uh, and, you know, Biden in America. Even the big box media, who is, at, you know, out, out openly allied with them, calls them unpopular. They, mm -hmm. cause, cause you can't deny it. they are. Un and yet they have this highest office. And, and I asked in the article, how long can they hold on to this, that dynamic where they claim that they're defending democracy. They're unpopular on a vast scale, and the people they claim to represent do not feel like they are being served by these people. Well, this poll of young voters reflects that to a T. And how can you blame them? You know, I, I, in this article I just wrote, I go through the things that they're going through. Why should they feel good about America? They can't get a house. That's complete home ownership is drifting away from young people. Uh, you know, if you look at, at, you know, I talked about health outcomes, societal outcomes, 33% of young Americans, adults are obese. You know, I think a similar number, I think it was 38% I saw are on some kind of pharmaceutical drug. Now, really, you know, 20, 30 years ago, it would be unusual for young American adults to be on pharmaceuticals. Today, it's completely normal. It's a, it's a norm. And it's a very strange dichotomy that, that they're offering up here. You know, I, I really do think that people are starting to wise up and saying, the system is not for me, the system is punishing me, and why should I support this system? And young people, more than any dynamic in America, more, any group in America, I feel, has a right to feel that way. 
It's a very interesting point you make there, especially uh, about how the, the, the system, the, the system that is in place or the systems that are in place across these, let's call them the developed first world countries, I guess, uh, and that they don't seem to be delivering on what people might expect. So, for example, in the United States, that there's some form of the American dream. Now, that's a very malleable thing for many people that people define it differently. But if it's not, if it doesn't appear achievable, then you have to ask the question of what happened because it used to be a, an achievable thing. So is there some kind of um, modernist decline happening? And, and I want to also come back to the point you made about the world leaders there. And, and I remember that article that you wrote on pages of Liberty Nation News last year about the unpopular leaders. And I think it's very appropriate for right now because uh, the G7 it's just been held, and you've got seven nations there. You've got Italy, Germany, France, the United Kingdom, the United States, Canada, and Japan. Now, I'm going to point out one exception there, and that's the Italian Prime Minister, Giorgia Maloney, is doing incredibly well. She's very popular in her country. She's just, her party, the Brothers of Italy, just stormed the recent. EU parliamentary elections. And then you compare that to how all the other six leaders in this G7 group are doing so poorly. Uh, so, for example, Rishi Sunak has had to call a snap election, which uh, the UK's prime minister, he, which he is on track to lose by. Well, he, it's expected at best his party, the Conservatives, will get about 18%. The opposition Labour Party will get 40% and Sunak will be out. In Germany, Olaf, Chancellor Olaf Scholz, during the EU parliamentary elections, his party finished third, which is, is pretty awful, let, let's be fair, considering he's the, the, the chancellor of the country. In France, because of the EU election results, uh, President Macron has been forced to call a National Assembly election, which means now he won't be booted out of office because he has a fixed term until 2027. But it could mean that he has almost no people in his party in the National Assembly, which means he's basically a lame duck for another two and a half years. J uh, Japan's prime minister, uh, sorry, I'm doing all this from memory. Japan's prime minister uh, just recorded uh, his lowest ever approval rating. In fact, the lowest that any Japanese prime minister has had in modern times of 21%. So when his party holds a leadership contest later this year, he's going to be gone. Justin Trudeau of Canada and his liberal party, they have not come first in a national poll against Pierre Polybert's uh, conservatives since May 2023. So 13 months gone. And they haven't come first in a national poll. Have I covered everybody? Uh, oh, and of course, I, I, I missed the obvious one. Joseph Robinette Biden. Mm. He, uh, he may still win the election, of course, but all of the polling nationally and in swing states points to Donald Trump reclaiming the White House. So you have all these, these six out of seven world leaders who are gathering together in Italy to determine what's going to happen across the world. And they're all so unpopular that many of them might not have either be in power or have any power by the end of this year. What does that tell us? I think it's fascinating. I can't believe you just did that all off the top of your head, by the way. That was very... I'm going to write this up for LibertyNation.com. Go and check it out. I'll do an article on it. But, but you know, the important thing that, you know, I, I would hope these people would realize for their own benefit more and more that I'm more concerned for the, for the nations of the West, but particularly America itself, there are worse things than losing an election. And I think that this poll of young people shows that. Having people opt out of the system, having people say, I don't believe in any of this anymore, is a far more dangerous scenario for the ruling elites than just merely being out of power for a while, because they've got so many ways to get back into power. But if you lose an entire demographic, let's say in America, if people don't believe fundamentally in what in, in, in the system of government or in, in with good reason, they feel like they've been lied to, cheated. It, it's very fascinating to think about a 35-year-old person in America today 
was 19 years old in 2008 when Barack Obama came in on his white horse, Mr. Hope and Change, and, they, and people believed it. They saw him as an alternative. And look how he turned out. He turned out not to be an alternative to the establishment. He turned out to be ultimate establishment. He's, he's as, as establishment as any Bush, as any Cheney, as all of them. And it's, and it's there for anybody to see. How disillusioning is that for someone who was 19 years old and filled with excitement about, hey, this, this, this democracy can work for us. Ah, oh, got fooled again. And so losing that fundamental trust in the system is far worse for these people than, than temporarily losing their grasp on power. But I truly believe that you know, I think they realize how unpopular they are, you know, what what they have to offer, what they're trying to do fundamentally transform these societies against the will of the people of these societies. They probably feel we can't afford to lose control, even for one election cycle. But but as a result, what that's going to lead to is widespread distrust in the entire system. And I think that is such a, a profound threat to them. And so that is what they should take from this poll of young voters more than anything. Joe Schaefer, thank you ever so much for being with us. Thank you. We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides.